A core feature of OmniFocus is the ability to organize tasks into projects. Projects are essentially ways of grouping related tasks. This could be specific actions that move you towards a defined outcome, or one-off actions in a specific area of life. In this video, we'll explore the different types of projects that OmniFocus supports. I'll walk you through some specific examples, and we'll show you the various ways in which projects can be configured. I'll also introduce you to some best practices for defining and naming projects. When you click the Projects tab, you'll see a list of the projects in your OmniFocus database displayed in the sidebar. Since this is a new installation, we currently only have one project, the Get Started with OmniFocus project that comes pre-installed with OmniFocus. We looked at this project in a previous video, and we'll delete it for now so we can start with a blank slate. So I'm going to select the project, then press the Delete key on my keyboard, and confirm the deletion by clicking Delete. You can always get it back in the future if necessary by choosing Add Tutorial Project from the Help menu. Now let's create some new projects. If you're familiar with David Allen's Getting Things Done, or GTD, approach to productivity, you'll know that a project in GTD terms is a defined outcome that takes two or more actions to achieve. Let's say, for instance, you're planning a trip to one of the most beautiful cities in the world, namely Vancouver, Canada, and this planning is likely to involve more than one action, so it makes sense to create a project. You can create a new project by choosing New Project from the File menu, or by pressing Shift-Command-N. I'm going to give this project a name. I'll call it Plan Trip to Vancouver. It's important that your project name clearly define your outcome. To paraphrase David Allen, it's important to know what done looks like. If I'd instead called this project Trip to Vancouver, there would be some ambiguity. It wouldn't be clear that the intention is to have the trip planned. Now let's go ahead and add some actions to this project. So I'm going to click on the project itself. I could click the New Action button in the toolbar to add a new action, or I can just press the Enter or Return key on my keyboard to add a new action. I'll add an action of Book Flight, and then I'll press Return, and then press Return again to add another action. This next one is to talk to Chris about dates for Vancouver trip. And I'll press return and return again. And then we'll fast forward and I'll add some more actions. When creating tasks, make sure they're specific and that they're ordered in a logical sequence. For example, it probably wouldn't make sense to book the flight until you've talked to Chris about dates and confirmed that your vacation request has been removed. I'll click on the book flight task and then I'll drag and drop it so it's underneath the submit vacation request. In general, whenever you create a task, ask yourself, is this task specific enough? And do I have everything I need to complete this task? In some cases, it can be handy to group related tasks within a project. For example, as part of the planning process, you might want to research things to do in Vancouver. You can create a group by first creating a new action. So I'll press return or enter on my keyboard to create a new action. And I'll call this one research things to do in Vancouver. I can then transform this action into a group simply by dragging and dropping tasks onto this new task that I just created. For example, if I select the Google Top Attractions in Vancouver, and then drag and drop on top of my new task, you'll see it's created as a subtask or as part of that group. I'm also going to take this bottom one called Tim for restaurant recommendations, so I'll click just to the left of that task, and then drop it onto this group to add that to the group. If I want to temporarily hide some of the project details, I can click on the Disclosure Triangle, and those two items are hidden for now, and then I can reveal them again by clicking on the Disclosure Triangle once again. Next, I'll select my Plan Trip to Vancouver project, and we'll look at some of the ways in which you can specify project options using the Inspector. If the Inspector panel isn't visible, click the Inspect button in the toolbar. Using the inspector, I can change the type of project. In this first example, we created a parallel project, meaning that all of the tasks are available, assuming they haven't been deferred to a future date. In a moment, we'll look at the other two types of projects, sequential and single actions. I can also change the status of a project. 
If our travel plans got put on hold, we could change the status of the project to on hold. If for some reason the project didn't go ahead as planned, we could change the status to dropped. And once the trip is fully planned, we can change its status to completed. If we're not planning to start this project right away, it can be deferred to a future date. You can either type a date into the text field, select a date from the calendar, or click one of the buttons to choose a date that's one day, one week, or one month from now. Similarly, you can give this project a due date, meaning that the project and all of its tasks become due on this date. I recommend using due dates sparingly and only for things that are actually due. And if I scroll the inspector down, I can add a note to the project. This can be useful to add a project summary that further defines the outcome of the project. Next, let's add a sequential project. I can create a new sequential project by clicking the plus button at the bottom of the column and choosing New Sequential Project. Sequential projects are useful in cases where actions need to be completed in a specific sequence. To take a simple example, let's say it's time to replace the filter on your furnace. We'll call this project Replace Filter on Furnace and we'll think through the actions that will bring this project to completion. Before you can actually replace the filter, you'll need to purchase a new one, and I'm assuming that you don't already have one on hand. And before you go shopping, you'll need to know what kind of filter to buy. So let's add some tasks to our new project. So I'm gonna click on the project and then press return or enter to add the first task. So the first task is to make a note of the filter model. And then once we have that information, I'll press return and return again to add the second task, which is to purchase a new filter. And then the third task would be to install a new filter. Notice that the first task is shown in a dark gray, indicating that it's available. And the other two tasks are shown in a light gray, indicating that they're not currently available. If I click the View button in the toolbar, You'll see that OmniFocus is showing me all remaining tasks, whether they're available or not. If I click Available, then I'll only see available tasks. In this case, the first one, which is to make a note of the filter model. Now let's say I just took a photo of my furnace filter, maybe I stored it in Evernote, so I have it there for future reference. I'll mark this task complete. And you'll notice that the second task in our sequential projects becomes available, purchase a new filter. And after I mark that one complete, the last action in my project becomes available. Once I've installed the filter, I'll mark that complete as well. And assuming there isn't any more work to be done, I can mark this project complete by selecting the project and changing its status from active to completed. Notice that this project disappeared from the project sidebar as soon as I marked it complete. If you want to refer back to this or other completed projects, you can click on the View menu and choose All. As the name implies, this shows all items, including the ones that you've completed and dropped. I'm going to change this option back to Remaining for now. Now, there may be instances where you have a parallel project that has a component that is sequential. For example, in our planned trip to Vancouver project, there are certain actions that need to take place in sequence before the flight can be booked. I'll create a new task called Confirm Dates and Flight. So I'll select the project, press Return, and we'll call this Confirm Dates and Flight. And then I'll transform this into a group by adding the tasks in the logical order. The first action I want to take in this group is to talk to Chris about dates for a Vancouver trip. And so I'm going to click and drag to the left of the task name and then drop that task on top of Confirm Dates and Flight. And then when I release the mouse button, it's going to create that as a subtask of Confirm Dates and Flight. The next action would be to submit a vacation request. So once again, I'm going to click and drag. And you want to make sure that this is indented so it actually becomes part of the group. And you'll actually see the group name selected if you're dragging it to the correct position. And then next, I want to confirm that the vacation request is approved. I want to make sure that's approved before I actually book the flight. So once again, click and drag, indent it to make it part of the group. And lastly, I'll add the book flight task. 
So now we have our sequence of actions laid out, but all four of these tasks are showing as available, even though the only task in this group that we can take action on is the first one. We can make these grouped actions sequential by selecting the group and changing the group type from parallel to sequential. Notice now that only the first action in this group is available. When I mark that action complete, then the second action becomes available and so on. And if I change the view filter to only show available actions, then I'm only going to see one task from this group. Let's change the view filter back to remaining so that we're seeing all incomplete tasks, whether they're available or not. Finally, let's take a look at the third type of project, the single action list, which is in GTD terms not technically a project. Instead, it's a collection of actions that have something in common that ties them together. You can create a new single action list by choosing New Single Action List from the File menu, or by clicking on the plus icon and choosing New Single Action List. Notice that the project icon is different, allowing you to visually distinguish between single action lists, parallel projects, and sequential projects. So let's say you own a car and you want to make sure the car is well taken care of. You could call the single action list car maintenance and use it for all of the one-off tasks related to car maintenance. So I'm going to press return and I'll select the project and press enter to create the first action. So let's say one of them is to call to book an appointment for an oil change. And the next one is maybe buy new windshield wipers. Unlike a parallel or sequential project, single action lists may be empty at times. They're also named differently since they don't relate to a specific outcome. The convention I use is to use single action lists to refer to different areas of responsibility or areas of focus in GTD terms. In this case, what I'm taking responsibility for is making sure that my car is well maintained. And that covers the basics of projects and groups. In future videos, we'll delve into more advanced functionality. For example, it's possible to create a project that automatically repeats and to have a project automatically complete when the last action has been completed. I'm Tim Stringer from Learn OmniFocus. Thanks for watching.